Hey everyone, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated and welcome to Retro Resale, where I show you how to reinvest your 401k in valuable retro computers and get a far better rate of return than your 401k, honestly. This is episode number 8 and it's all about the Commodore Amiga 2000, one of my overall favorite computers, both personally and also to buy and sell. It's a huge box with lots of slots and drives, and it's rare that 2000s are empty, which means when you buy one, you almost always get a bunch of bonus items that the seller didn't even realize were there. So I knew I was doing an Amiga 2000 video and I wanted to brush up on my knowledge, so I bought this book from Germany. The Big Amiga 2000 book. Beautiful big book. Look at this. I'm going to learn all about the Amiga 2000. Oh, it's in German. Uh, I don't know German. Oh, well. I can look at the pictures, I guess. This book is, like, new. Like, it's an old book, but it's new. 1987. This is not a reprint. Anyway, so before we go any further, what is an Amiga exactly? It's a 16-bit computer introduced in 1985, and it was a successor to the 8-bit Commodore 64. It's known for great graphics, and it's innovative in that it has chips to handle the graphics and sound and other tasks, and these chips let it do those functions seamlessly instead of depending on the processor to do everything, like for example a Macintosh of the time does. And if you've used a Mac of the time, it's a very jerky, slow experience not nice and smooth like an Amiga. The Amiga 1000 came out in 1985, but it was expensive and has limitations. In 87, Commodore replaced it with the Amiga 500 and 2000. Functionally, these two are roughly the same and based on the same 7 MHz 68000 processor, but like I mentioned, the 2000 is a big box full of expandability, whereas the 500 is more limited. The 2000 is just a really weird computer when it comes down to it, and I'll go into why. Here's the Motorola 68000 processor, and right below it is where you find the battery. When you get a 2000, even before turning it on, you'll want to yank out the battery because they leak like crazy. This battery has been removed, but you can see the damage all over here. It gets into the processor and causes a no video situation, and things get really tricky. Over here you have the video card slot, which you don't need to use because the 2000 has composite and RGB video built in, but if you want you can install the famous NewTek video toaster here, or other video cards like Opal Vision or Flickr Fixers or many others. Then there's this slot for upgraded processors like the 68,030 and 68,040. These are very valuable cards and you can see from the back of the computer whether there's something in this slot or not. These slots here are the Amiga's native expansion slots, called Zorro slots, and in these you generally have SCSI hard drive controller cards, or RAM expansion cards, or combo cards that are RAM and SCSI. In fact, there are cards that go into the CPU slot that are CPU, RAM, SCSI, and also a hard drive strapped right onto the card, so there are all kinds of combinations. One weird thing about this computer is that these slots back here are actually PC ISA slots, ISA slots, and a common upgrade for the 2000 is something called a bridge board, which is literally a PC on a card, and it connects the Zorro side to the ISA side, bridging them together. It's pretty cool. You can literally have a PC inside your Amiga 2000 and have it running in a window that doesn't affect performance of the Amiga programs running simultaneously. Today, maybe that's not too impressive, but for the 80s, it was totally mind-boggling. Also, if you see a five and a quarter inch floppy drive on the front of an Amiga 2000, chances are there's also a bridge board installed because the two worked together. Beyond that, this is the Kickstart ROM. Kickstart is kind of like the BIOS of an Amiga, and it will generally be version 1.3 or 2, which is of interest to buyers. This big square chip is called the Agnus, which is the most notable of the Amiga's custom chips. Often you'll find an upgraded Agnus here, which is a daughter card generally referred to as a mega chip. Okay, enough explanation, let's go Amiga 2000 hunting. I found all of these with my typical keyword search of vintage computer. The first one was a while back before I got the idea for this series, so I don't have pictures or the listing, unfortunately, but for 525 shipped, it was a 2000 in really bad physical condition that didn't power on, 
And here's the thing, it came with two keyboards. Amiga 2000 keyboards are insanely valuable and often go for 225 or more. Plus I knew I could sell even a dead 2000 for a few hundred. So this one was a no brainer. There were no pictures of the inside or the back, but again, who cares if there's anything in it, it's just a bonus. Conservatively, we're looking at 300 for a dead 2000 plus 400 for the two keyboards. And at that point, I'm at 700 for my 525 and probably way better. So this next one, I paid the full 574 price, but I knew it was worth it. As you can see from the back, it has a video toaster, it has an accelerator card, and some sort of breakout card related to the toaster, which is very common. They often have TBC cards and ancillary related cards. Uh, the seller likely had no idea about any of this. He said the computer powered on, which is good enough for me. I know that a toaster goes for 200, an accelerator 3 or 400. This one is a complete shot in the dark, but at 257 shipped, hey, I'll take that risk all day, given I can sell it back to the world without even opening the box for $300. No real information posted, says it's untested. Picture of the back shows something weird going on inside, but hard to tell. It's not in the CPU slot, so probably a hard drive card with RAM. Now this one's interesting. They state they don't want to power it on because they think they might break something. So maybe they're conscious of the battery situation and how it could leak, which you could say is a good thing. If you look at the back, it's got an accelerator and also a video card of some type. They show the cards out of the computer, which makes me a little suspicious because clueless sellers don't open the case, let alone take the cards out. But hey, again, the question is always, assume it's all dead and then name your price. The worst case scenario, the dead computer is $300, accelerator is 200 even dead, video card 100, so I'm at 600 minimum, and they accepted a 475 offer for 495 shipped, so we're definitely in business. Wow, so computer number one is a mess, but what a beautiful and profitable mess. First off, what's this red towel it's packed with? Looks kind of grimy? I don't know. I don't want to think about that too much. Grime is definitely the worst part of my job. So anyway, yeah, there's a very crude switch cut out in the front right of this computer, not too pretty. But what this does is it switches back and forth the kickstart switcher. And I'm happy to have one of those. A kickstart switcher allows you to, to have different versions of kickstart ROMs and power on with the one of your choice. The reason you do this is some software won't work with one or the other. So this is a nice bonus. It replaces the original chip and then this daughter card that has both ROMs kind of hangs out on the board. We've got a hard drive literally strapped in on the edge of the computer. That's a new one for me. Usually you have it on a card like we've shown, or God forbid, actually put the hard drive in one of the actual drive compartments meant to house a drive. The next discovery, this guy has a mega chip, the two megabyte chip RAM module I talked about. That's worth good money, so good to see. We've got a fan flopping around loose here. Next, we've got a microwave flicker fixer. I remember drooling over these as a kid, but never being able to afford one. What this is, is the high-res modes of early Amigas flickered really badly. It was interlaced, so these cards rid you of that problem. And, oh my gosh, it just gets better and better with this one. We have a Commodore A2630 accelerator card. These are worth good money. They have a 68030 processor and an 882 coprocessor. You can see the chips here under the shield. And then there's this crazy tape drive. I don't think I've seen one like this. I certainly won't be testing it, but perhaps it'll be a bonus for the next owner. And uh, we've definitely got some battery corrosion, so I removed the battery very carefully, as you can see, with a giant blunt instrument. And the computer didn't, didn't power on, which is not surprising. Uh, it just has a lot of damage and is really rough overall. But yeah, wow, so much in this computer. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna strip the cards out, keep the hard drive, and I'll sell the computer by itself with the mega chip kickstart switcher and tape drive still installed. And I'll sell the flicker fixer and accelerator separately. I'll sell one keyboard for 200 and I'll keep the other for my inventory. I don't bother selling keyboards with dead machines. Someone who works on dead machines has already got a keyboard. Yeah, and this way I think I can easily clear $1,000 on my $524 purchase.
Okay, so computer number two, a pretty exciting one. I know there's lots of good stuff in here. Uh, we've got the GVP Great Valley Products Accelerator. GVP is basically the premier third-party component brand for Amigas back in the day. So this is nice to see, and it has some RAM on the card too. Video toaster looks good. Um, a little battery corrosion, but not awful. I removed the battery just in case, since you can never trust these. But unfortunately, computer number two is a dead machine as well. Uh, yeah, it's too bad, but it happens. Corrosion got into the processor socket, so it needs board work. I tried swapping out the processor with a known good processor, but no luck. Uh, but that's fine. It'll still get me 300, and it's it'll go to a professional who actually has time to make the board work again. Like the last computer, I'll sell the machine by itself and then the GVP separately and then the toaster and its add-on card together since a toaster person would probably appreciate having both. I'll keep the drive and also the second floppy um, you might notice a theme, which is that I'm accumulating parts I'm not even selling. This is very important to do because as you get good machines in the future, you've got the parts to complete them. Amiga number three, nothing super exciting here. Similarly, this one has a dead board with battery damage, possibly bad processor, and the replacement didn't fix when I tried. It's got a hard drive with a SCSI controller. SCSI cards are worth maybe $50, so no big deal. I'll put that aside and the drive aside, and I'll take the second 3.5 inch floppy out and put it in my pile. And then I'll sell the dead computer for three to four hundred dollars range, and I'll easily make back the two something I paid. All right, yeah, Amiga 2000. Amiga 2000s are awesome because they are filled with cards, and the people who sell them don't really realize that. And huh, yeah, the reason I paused in this video is I immediately knew the seller sent me the wrong computer because there should have been an accelerator in the processor slot. Look at this picture from the listing. And this is the guy who showed the cards out of the machine and didn't want to power it on and all that, so I was already a little bit concerned. I emailed the guy very nicely and said, hey, what the hell's going on? But before that, I made sure to test this incorrect machine he sent me. Uh, not much in it, but it's a good working machine that boots up. So it's times like these you need to think strategically. And I suggested that if he were interested in selling me this incorrect machine, in addition to sending the one I already bought, um, I'd be willing to pay 200 for it. I clicked send and crossed my fingers, and a few minutes later, success. The guy was apologetic and welcomed the $200, and all was well. So that goes to show sometimes, if you bite your tongue and spend two minutes thinking, you can really end up in a good place. So anyway, I listed the new $200 machine for $499 or best offer, and I included a workbench disk to boot it with, as I do with all working machines. I've made a habit of creating the boot disks on the machine itself that I'm selling. That's good for a couple reasons. It proves the disk drive works, and I found a drive in the long run is going to have fewer problems with disks it has created. These old components are very flaky after all. Here's a disk being created with the raw copy disk tool. Okay, hang in there, we're almost done. So the real Amiga number four finally showed up and it works great, so that's good news. It's similar to previous ones we've already looked at, so I won't go too deep into it. Uh, we've got another GVP card, an Opal Vision video card, an internal CD-ROM drive that seems jammed. So I'll sell the two cards separately and the computer I'll sell for 699 because it's better than the previous one along with a workbench disc, a game, and a joystick because, hey, why not? Okay, so all this talk, but how did we actually do? Five Amiga 2000 systems and a whole lot of cards? I'm not going to show the sales receipts because they aren't so exciting, and quite honestly, I'm tired and I really got to get this wrapped up. Uh, so let's start with Amiga 2000 number one. Let's see, cost is 524, sale price 417. The spare keyboard went for 187, a little bit lower than I would have thought. The Amiga 2630 accelerator 360 and the flicker fixer 168. Total profits after cost $608, so really impressive on this uh, computer. Computer number 2, cost 574. Um, when I haven't sold it yet, I'm putting estimated, so 
I'm doing a very conservative estimate, $300 for the sale price. Video toaster, $167, a little lower than usual. And the GVP card, $222, which is a little lower than usual as well. So Amiga number two, $115 profit after costs. Number three, cost is $258. Sale price, again, estimated $300. SCSI card estimated $50. Profit $92 after costs. Amiga number four, cost is $495. Sale price $481. Opal Vision video card $226. The third accelerator card $313. So $525 profit after costs. And the unexpected fifth Amiga 2000 cost was $200. Sale price $363. So $163 after costs. So, total cost, $2,051, and total profit, $1,503. And I should have put on here after costs, because that is pure profit after the 2051 cost is paid. So, a good amount of profit, not quite doubling my money, which is what I aim for. But, on the other hand... Uh, I still have a pile of parts that are probably worth $500, and there are a few estimated items on here which were estimated pretty conservatively, so they could sell for more and make yet more money. So there you have it, an exploration into the buying and selling of Amiga 2000s on eBay. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use this information to go out and do this yourself, and thanks for watching. See you next time.